And now verse 25. And again, inasmuch as parents have children in Zion, or in any of her stakes, which are organized, that teach them not to understand the doctrine of repentance, faith in Christ, the Son of the living God, and of baptism and the gift of the Holy Ghost by the laying on of hands, when eight years old, the sin be upon the heads of the parents." Uh, can, I, can I just share a little story with you that I heard uh, on the radio 30 years ago, driving to work, uh, about a father who was very, very successful at work. Oh, he was good. He, he, was, he was on the top of his game, and he would spend hours and hours and hours at work, and everybody at work loved him, and everybody celebrated him, thought he was the greatest thing ever, and he was making a lot of money and, and climbing that ladder of success in his career. And uh, little did he realize what he was missing out on at home. One day, he came home late again, as was his practice, and his wife had put the children to bed, and he went in to his oldest son, about ten years old, and his son was already in bed, but he was oh, still awake, and he gave him a little kiss goodnight and told him how much he loved him, and the little kid said, Daddy, can I ask you a question? How much do you make an hour? And his dad thought, that's a strange question from a ten-year-old. And so he said something, he gave him some number. At that point, the little kid reached under his pillow and he grabbed out some wadded money and he started counting it. And he said, Dad, can I borrow twelve dollars from you? And his dad's like, what do you need to borrow twelve dollars from me for? And he said, because if I take that twelve dollars and add it to what I already have, then maybe I could buy an hour of your time. Brothers and sisters, there are a lot of things to pursue in this life. There are a lot of things to, to go after and spend our time and energy and talent on. I love verse 25 because it brings us back home. It brings us back to things that matter the most, and the things that matter the most aren't things. They're people. They're loved ones. They're all around us. Keep in mind, when you, when you sacrifice willingly for something, it leads to increased love of that thing. The greater the sacrifice, the greater the potential for love. I, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I have never yet met anyone who is getting near the end of their life, who shakes their head in regret and says, man, I just wish I could go back in time and spend more time at the office, spend more time in worldly pursuits, getting the gain and the glory of the world. I I've never yet met anybody who, who has said that, but I've met a lot of people who have said, oh, I wish I could go back in time and just spend more time with my family, with my children. Sacrificing some of those things that are really important to me at the time for those which are the most important, which are those relationships, those, those connections with people. Now, this is not intended to be some new program you institute in your family or become some formulaic one-size-fits-all program. Isn't it interesting that the most powerful relationships with your family, uh, th those most powerful experiences, do you know what they often are? They're spelled this way. It's, it means you spend time with them. We're not just talking spending lots of time making money so that you can 
spend quality time for one or two weeks a year. It's quantity and quality time with those that matter most. It's, and for some families, that means you're going to spend a lot of time going to, to sporting events and practices and games. For others, it's going to be dance recitals. For others, it's going to be spending time in the kitchen cooking with them and taking food to people. For others, it's going to be sitting on a couch reading lots of books or a series of books or watching movies together or taking up a hobby of painting or skiing or, or going on vacations, whatever they may be. It's, it's this time on task where these youngsters then learn from you and these people around you learn from you but the key with the children isn't just time to fill the time. It's time where they get to really know you, where you can really teach them the gospel. Which means it's kind of like these revelations we've been talking about, where they go along doing the best they can, and then on occasion God gives these flashes of brilliance. If we're not putting that in with our family, we're less open to those flashes of brilliance where at the right time, at that perfect time when that child's heart or mind are receptive to actually learn something, where the Holy Ghost can then inspire us to teach that gospel principle, if, if we're not spending the time with our children and with our loved ones, then we're less likely to get, get those opportunities.